Battlefield Hardline is Visceral Games' take on what would happen if Michael Mann, director of Heat, decided to make a first-person shooter. I was going to use Michael Bay for that example, but then I remembered Titanfall already exists. Anyway, in Battlefield Hardline, the Warzone is swapped out for the Homestead, as players team up as cops or robbers, pulling off or thwarting bank heists, mass car thefts, or straight up staying alive in strategic location matches. But while Battlefield Hardline has just had a five-day beta across PC and consoles, with over six million people playing, there's no denying the felonious first-person shooter has a bit of an image problem. But why is that? In Battlefield Hardline, one team plays as a police force that quite literally goes in all guns blazing to stop a team of criminals from doing their thing. Particular feathers in the multiplayer cap are Heist Mode, where the criminals are trying to clean out a bank vault, and Hotwire, a bit like Conquest Mode, only all the capture points are vehicles that need to be driven above a certain speed to do the controlling players any good. Luigi! Police! Get down on the ground! It's all positioned as bombastic fun, the likes of which we've been happily consuming in the cinema for decades, but there are elements of Battlefield Hardline that, frankly, stick in the throat. First and foremost, there's the fact the police are given military-grade equipment such as attack choppers and assault rifles to deal with what is, essentially, a civil disturbance. It's all presented as a bit of jolly hockey sticks, ramping up cops and robbers to levels worthy of the finest action films of the 1980s. However, Hardline's outfitting hues all too closely to the scenes we saw in Ferguson, Missouri in 2014, when the police were given military equipment such as mine-resistant ambush-protected vehicles and assault rifles to deal with what was, essentially, a civil disturbance. Only, Ferguson wasn't jolly hockey sticks. It was alarming, alienating, and, at points, frankly, terrifying. The similarities between recent controversial police action in the US and the gung-ho gameplay of Battlefield Hardline are unfortunate. EA, for its part, has stressed these similarities are coincidental, arguing they are not aiming to make any form of social commentary whatsoever. They also pointed to the option to play non-lethally in the campaign mode, where you can resolve every encounter without killing anyone except for three. You only have to kill three people. Gotta make it for you. But realistically, 90% of players' time with Battlefield Hardline will be spent in multiplayer in a shoot-first, ask-questions-later approach to crime. That's not problematic in terms of the gameplay, it's a team-based shooter, of course you're trying to kill the guys on the other team. The problem is how thinly stretched the cops versus robbers skin gets when forced over the battlefield skeleton, a skeleton that is 100% military. Your location is compromised. Hardline gives the impression of a police force that has thrown the handbook out of the window. They're not bothered with establishing a perimeter or entering into negotiations, they're just going to go in, aim for the head, and sort everything else out later. That one. It's a cynical representation that, unfortunately, resonates with a lot of accusations levelled at police units stateside, no matter how well-founded or not those accusations are. The news report style loading screens definitely don't help either. Each warns citizens of an unfolding situation, for instance, telling them to stay away from the downtown area. This affects you, the ordinary people, it tells you. Time to shoot someone in the head, the gameplay replies. <laughs> The thing is, the setup to Battlefield Hardline would at least be more easily justified if it added any significant depth to the gameplay, but it doesn't. Zipping around in Hardline feels the same as any other Battlefield title, making the law enforcement versus suspect setup to Hardline at worst borderline insensitive, and at best sort of redundant. Now, I'm sure there are a lot of people who don't care whether a game clangs like a church bell with a list of unfortunate similarities. I imagine I'll be hearing from a few of those people in the comments section of this video. But, like it or not, video games, like any other medium, do have a social responsibility, and Hardline seems staunchly, stubbornly ignorant of the current climate. Releasing a shooter about a militarised police force at a time when the police force is looking increasingly like the military is either misguided, pig-headed, or both. Especially when one considers how eager Battlefield as a franchise is to fall in line with US foreign policy. 
Battlefield frequently dips into the Middle East for both its campaign mode and multiplayer as a matter of course because it prides itself on being a realistic military shooter and, of course, that's where the bad guys are. The enemy factions are admittedly fictionalised a little, but the intended effect of campaigns like Battlefield 3 is clear. This is realistic and American soldiers are heroes without question. Again, that's not necessarily problematic, but when the new hot release is essentially from the makers of the US military is definitely in the right and joining in is fun, here comes their newest game, How to Handle Civil Unrest in a No-Nonsense Manner. Well, that is problematic. I got him! Stay where you are! Hands up! But then again, perhaps you disagree. Whatever your views, stick them in the comment box below, and if you like this video, please consider subscribing. Thanks for watching.